Verma composting, worm composting, compost tea. Seems to be all the rage these days and well, it finally lured me in and I decided to give it a try. So I went out and I found somebody local to me that sells the compost worms and I built myself a worm composter. Now this is a really simple design, probably only took about an hour to build. A uh, few tools, few materials, really simple thing. Um, I'm not going to go fully in depth on how to build this. I'm going to just show you how it's constructed and you should be able to make your way from there if you're handy. I mean, I could look at this thing and see how to build it. And if you are interested in a step-by-step, -step, I saw this design on regenerative gardening with Rishi and I'll put his link in the description below and he, where he goes through fully how to build this thing step-by-step. -step. But I didn't think it really warranted you watching me put every screw into this thing and whatnot. It's pretty, pretty basic design. So that said, I think the concept of how this system works is the most important thing. Now, how it works is you're going to start out with just one level and you're going to put your worms in there and the food. And once this bottom level is filled up here, the worms will start to migrate up to another level that you add on when you put the food in there. The worms are going to follow the food. So as this fills with vermicompost and it gets to the top and then you put the second level on and then you put the food in it, the worms will start to migrate up into that level. And this way, by the time you get to your top level and your worms are only really going to stay in the top six inches of this, they're going to follow the food, you can pull this bottom level out and harvest the vermicompost. Now that was important to me because I didn't want to have to sift through the vermicompost to, to retain my compost worms. Now if I lose a few, that's fine, but the bulk of them I didn't want to lose and I didn't want to be digging through it and spending all that time doing that. So I think this is a good concept. Now I do like it better than the plastic ones. I think it looks a little better. It's going to look better sitting in my yard, especially once the wood gets a little bit weathered up and everything here. I've got a nice little spot behind my garage where I'm going to put this. It needs to stay a little bit cool. It needs to stay a little bit moist, not overly moist, which is another concept why I think that this uh, wood is going to work better. It can kind of leach out the, the extra moisture where a plastic bin is going to, going to, uh, retain a lot of the, the moisture and may actually like drown the worms if it's too wet. Now this is open on the bottom. Each level has a piece of screen underneath it and I'm going to show you the construction in just a minute. I have it sitting on this plastic bin. When I put it outside I'm going to prop it up on some bricks or something where I can just slide this plastic bin out. And the plastic bin is there for catching the compost tea so as the moisture from everything drains through and drips out it will collect in this bin down below. So I'm going to bring you in a little closer. We'll take a look at how one of these levels is put together and then you'll just replicate that for as many levels as you want. I made four. You could make as many as you wanted. I'll also go through adding the worms and getting this thing started so follow along. All right, so as you can see, it's just a basic two by four construction, nothing fancy. Two by four is cut to the size you want. And I put a couple of screws in each place where the, the boards intersect. My overall length was 25 inches for the long pieces. And then the short side pieces, I cut them at 10 and a half inches, which the overall width then will be 13 and a half edge to edge once it's constructed. Now I chose that width for a couple of reasons. Now for number one, the hardware wire, the hardware cloth, the screen, whatever you want to call it, that comes in 24 inch wide rolls standardly and that's what I had and so that's the width I wanted to make it. And then also I didn't want to make this too big. It's going to be full of wet worm castings and it's going to be a little bit on the heavy side and so I just wanted something manageable size. And I did put these little handles on the side as well. This made these out of a little piece of one by two that I also screwed on. So I got something to lift it by. Now, as far as the hardware wire, uh, wire, cloth, whatever you want to call it, just make sure it overlaps a little bit and you just need, need to have enough to be able to tack it on. I use galvanized nails. You could use screws and washers, whatever you want. But the important thing is you want to get this screen a little bit tight. So pound your first nail in, in the corner of one of these squares on the far side and then on the opposite side when you're putting that nail in or screw in or whatever you're using angle it away 
from the last nail and then that way it will kind of as the screw or nail draws in it'll pull this kind of tight next thing you're going to need is a lid i just made my lid out of a piece of osb i had laying around i made a little handle for it here out of some wood you don't even really need a handle on it but the other thing i did was i put these little pieces of one by two in here i made them a half inch short of each end of the the lid that way when i put the lid on it keeps it from sliding around too much on there and when it's outside i might set a couple of bricks or something on here to hold the lid on so the wind doesn't blow it off if we get any severe winds but other than that it's a simple construction so you start with one layer you put your worms in and then you just keep going from there so let's go ahead and put the worms in and we'll get this started here so since the holes in the bottom of this are half inch diameter, I need to put something in the bottom first to keep the worms from falling through. Obviously, I want to keep them in my worm composter. So I'm going to start, I'm going to put a layer of damp newspaper across the entire bottom of this. Just kind of seal it off. And you don't need the newspaper super wet, just damp. Now that I have the newspaper in, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just add some of my garden soil here. Now this is soil from my raised garden beds, but I'm just going to put a layer of that on the bottom here as well. Just kind of cover the bottom with some nice loose soil. It'll give the worms something to use for a substrate as well. And I don't want to get too deep here. I just want to add just enough to give a nice little base to this unit here. Now the guy that sold me these worms, he sold me these worms. They're in a nice little shredded up newspaper base here a couple inches deep in this bin already and so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to add all that and that'll actually serve as a good base for these worms give them some food source right out of the start but I'm going to see if I can find a few worms for you here so you can see the worms here they're just trying to dodge the light right now you can see they do not like the light see they're just they want they want darkness they do not like to be into the light so that's going to help too because there's going to be little gaps in between this as well and you you don't have to worry about your worms escaping but it'll also help help the unit breathe a little bit but you can see they're just small there's just tons of them in this and so i'm just going to go ahead and i'm going to dump the whole thing in here and let it let it start working here Those things are elusive. Boy, you try to grab them, they just dart right down into that loose, loose soil there. There are just tons of them in here. And these are our little composting worms here. Like I said, they do not like the light and they are looking to get away from the, the light here. Okay, so that's it really. You just add some damp newspaper to the bottom, add a little soil onto that, and then add your worms and a food source. Now, my food source for the time being is going to be these shredded papers that this guy sent with the worms. He gave me a nice bin full of shredded paper that looks like he ran through some kind of paper shredder or something. So I think that's going to suffice for food for my worms right now. I don't want to overdo it. I don't want this to start rotting, the food to start rotting in here if the worms can't consume it fast enough. Now the worm population will grow and I'm probably I'll be able to add more food at a time as they do. But for the time being, I think that's going to be good enough. And so this layer right now is going to just sit just like this. I'm not going to add the other layers until this one gets full. In the meanwhile, I'm just going to put the lid on. But as your layers fill, as the worms consume the food and turn it into worm castings, and this layer grows higher and higher, when it gets to the top, you're going to want to go ahead and put another layer of your, your container on top. And then you'll start adding the, the food scraps into this bin. And then what's going to happen is the worms are going to migrate up into that area. They're going to start consuming the food. It's going to pretty much be touching the other layer. The worms are going to eat the food scraps and it's going to start to fill this layer up as well. So you just keep doing that, keep adding your layers. And eventually what's going to happen is your bottom one is going to be completely filled with worm castings and you'll have several layers on top. The worms are said to only go about six inches in depth. 
So that's about one and a half of these layers. So if you have multiple two layers above this, you'd be safe to pull out the bottom one and you don't have to worry about recuperating any of your worms and taking any of the worms out. The bottom one should be completely full of just pure worm castings and the worms will have migrated up in the tower, which is a great concept. Like I said, I don't want to spend a bunch of time sorting worms out. I don't want to lose my worms every time I take the, the vermicompost out of the system. So after you take the bottom layer out that is full of vermicompost, you empty out the vermicompost, use it wherever you want to use it. Then you're going to use that layer again. We'll go back on the top of the stack. That will be your next tier of the of the worm composter. Another thing you want to keep in mind is you you do have to keep the worms moist. So you don't want them overly wet, but you don't want them to dry out either. Any excess moisture will in this system just drain out into the bottom tray or out onto the ground, depending if you have a tray under it or not. But you shouldn't really have to worry about overwatering this too much but just keep an eye on it. So that's it for right now. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button. If you want to see more of my videos, hit the subscribe button. And as I said, I'll put the link to Rishi's video at Regenerative Gardening down in the description below so you can see the full step-by-step -step do it yourself on how to build this if you'd like. But it's really a simple concept. Give it a try. Happy composting, and I'll see you in the next video.